Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. And so we thank God for you that are joining us and those that will be listening and those that are part of what we're doing. So you can get in and really get a hold of what God wants you to know and give you privy information about how to excel and succeed in your life and to be very wealthy and healthy and prosperous and anointed and blessed. So this is what we're really after. This is our goal. Praise God. And of course, we thank God for that. And of course, last week uh, in episode number one, we did talk about Solomon. Of course, we know that God talked to Solomon in a dream. And it was a beautiful thing. And God asked him, well, uh, proposed to him that to ask whatever he wanted, he gave him a blank check and he was able to uh, asked some beautiful things, and uh, God then enhanced him with honor and prosperity besides the things that he asked for, and um, it was quite amazing. And then we saw how that Solomon gave a tremendous offering at that time at the dedication of the house of God, um, you know, in the 22,000s of, of, of sheep and oxen and what have you. Anyway, um, really a high... Uh, uh, bona fide blessed sacrifice uh, Solomon uh, was responsible for executing before Almighty God as well as you know and then the glory came down the fire came down you know people were slain the spirit on the pavement of the ground there uh, near the uh, court of the uh, new temple and you know the spirit of God just really uh, under it and, and um, just authorized and substantiated their work there. And um, so along the way we go, and we're just looking. Um, this is down the road a little bit from where we're going to be. We're going to go back in the calendar a little bit and, and look at uh, Jacob's life. And, of course, God spoke to Jacob as well in a dream. And... Uh, you know, dreamers um, will reach uh, high destinies. So let's remember Joseph. Dreamers reach high destinies, and uh, God gives them amazing, um, beautiful, and outstanding uh, credence and um, credentials and prolific power, and uh, it gives them uh, divine execution, which is a uh, outside the box of, you know, beyond our comprehension. But anyway, Genesis 28, 17 to 22, um, Jacob, you know, pulled aside for a bit and was resting. He put a, a stone on, as a pillow under his head and, and he went to sleep. And then this statement here, uh, it says he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? There's none other, but this is none other, but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Because he had a uh, visitation from God and, and, a, and a ladder dropped down from heaven. And Jacob arose early in the morning and took a stone that he had uh, put for his pillow and uh, set it for a pillar and poured out oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of the place Bethel. But the name of the city uh, was called Luz um, at the first. And then, you know, he does a peculiar thing. Jacob vowed a vow saying, Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and, and clothing and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house and all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give a tenth unto thee. So there he is, um, offering God a tenth of everything. And he, of course, he was taught by uh, Abraham. Abraham taught Isaac, and Isaac taught Jacob uh, this whole concept of tithing. And, uh, and with this direct divine encounter of Almighty God that hit him, uh, he was more than ready and steady to really pick up from there and trust God all the way and trust God for everything and really let God be in complete control of his life. A lot of people aren't ready for that. 
uh, they haven't had that divine encounter yet. They haven't had that divine compunction and unction. They don't have the Spirit of God at that measure. But that's not to say that people don't um, get that kind of experience. Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, I want to read a couple of things uh, in Genesis 28. And get back in just uh, verse 11. <clears throat> well, actually, let's get to verse 10. Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he he was being directed by God. He was going a certain direction, but he wasn't quite sure where he was going. But he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. So it was the end of the day. And he took the stones of the place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached into heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. What a beautiful vision. What a beautiful dream. What a beautiful beholding. What a be beautiful revelation. What a be beautiful sequence of things. And, and, and to top it all off, in verse 13, behold, the Lord God stood above it. And he began to speak and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all families of the earth be blessed. And, and, and this beautiful statement in the 15th verse, of, Behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. Look at that. No matter where he went, God was with him. With him for what? Well, to keep him, to sustain him, to maintain him, to authorize and activate his life. I will keep thee in all the places where thou goest and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until, and this is a wonderful piece of scripture that we really need to retain for ourselves and claim for ourselves. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I spoke, I have spoken unto thee of. I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. It's good to see Myra. I just saw you, I saw you on the uh, on the application, God bless you. Good, good to have you here. But anyway, then he was afraid, of course, and he said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So um, anyway, and then he does omniscience to the Lord. You know, he sets a pillar uh, and the stones up. He makes a monument. Uh, and then he, he vows a vow unto the Lord. And on top of that, he, he, he declares to God, that if you'll be my God and go where I go and you, you'll, you'll, you'll keep me and wherever I go and bring me back to this place safely, he said, I'll, I'll tie the tenth of everything that I get in my hands to you. So that's uh, basically where everything takes place um, for, for uh, Jacob. Now, um, we meet Jacob uh, going down the way now. Uh, from there in uh, Genesis 31. And this is very important because this is uh, going to reveal a lot of things about why people uh, see prosperity stopping in their life. And um, this is really going to open some eyes. And I think it's important for us to go through this and really just discuss this. So in Genesis 31, in verse 1, Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father, which is, which is a total fabrication. But, and Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not as it had been. So sons of Laban were accusing Jacob of stealing. And then uh, Jacob noticed also that Laban had a real attitude. Now it changed from when he first met him. And, 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 of course, he worked for him for 20 years. And we'll see in a minute. But in verse 3, And the Lord said to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be, I'll be with you. So here's the Lord. Now, he steps in. The Lord steps in after uh, Jacob begins to notice some things here and some oppression, some persecution. And the Lord says to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Look at that. So, And that's quite amazing, isn't it? So God gives him a, a, a rim, a word, a, a now word, a, a, a heaven factual word, and that's really all you need, 
really, especially after he made a memorial. He made a vow back there in Bethel, and he, he, he declared to God that he would tithe on everything that God gave him. So he says, he said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it used to be, okay? But the God of my father has been with me. And he, he starts to talk to um, Rachel and Leah, his two wives. Well, let's just back it up to verse 4. So Jacob sent word to Rachel and Leah and, and came out to the fields where his flocks were. And he said to them, I see that your father's attitude toward me is not what it used to be. But the God of our fathers has been with me. The, but the God of our fathers has been with me. Knows what he's saying is it's not my fault. I say God was with me. I mean, God is with you. All things work together for good. When God is with you, there's nothing the enemy can do to confound you. There's nothing any enemy can do to subtract from you or detract from you. When God is with you, all things are possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. No matter what the playing field is, the God of my fathers has been with me. And you know that I work for your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me by changing my wages ten times. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. See, God promised him that back at Bethel. However, God has not allowed him to harm me. And he said, uh, the speckled ones be your wages. Then all the flocks gave birth to speckled young. And if he said, the streaked uh, ones will be your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked young. So God has taken away your father's livestock and has given them to me. For, for God has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me. No matter um, what he said that the payoff would be, uh, God made sure that the cattle were of the pedigree and the color uh, that Laban suggested would be his pay. Hallelujah. Isn't that something? Wow. Wow. Uh, in verse 10, it says, in breeding season, I once had a dream in which I looked up and saw the male goats mating with a flock. Uh, they were streaked and speckled and spotted. And the angel of the Lord said to me in a dream, Jacob, I answered. I said, here I am. And he said, look up and see that all the male goats mating with the flock are streaked and speckled and spotted. For I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel. Look at that. He, now, he brings it back up again. See, this is the point. He brings it back up. I am the God of Bethel where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now, leave this land at once and go back to your native land. See, that's the power of a vow. I mean, that is the real power of a vow because Laban was not happy with him. And Laban really, uh, his life was on jeopardy. Uh, between Laban and his sons, uh, they wanted to kill him, uh, and the, and um, his his life was on the line. But you know, he made a vow, and boy, the power of a vow when you really make a vow with God, especially after God revelates to you, if God uh, gives you a dream or gives you some kind of special, significant spiritual experience, and making a vow then is a smart thing to do. Uh, then Rachel and Leah replied, Do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate? Does he not regard us as foreigners? See, see their, their re relationship had so changed that um, not only did he get Laban's daughters, but he had to work for him for 14 years to get him, to get them. But things had so changed for him in his wealth, in his, in his finances, in, in his um, prosperity, that they were disowned and really um, uh, considered foreigners. They, that's how they were considered. They, they weren't even considered family anymore. They were considered foreigners and things that really changed. Not only has he sold us, but he has used up what was paid for us, as the girls are talking here about their father. Not only has he sold us, but he used up what was paid for us. Surely all the wealth that God took away <clears throat> from our father belongs to us and to our children. So do whatever God has told you to do. He, uh, they're encouraging Jacob to go ahead and get out of there. So Jacob, and his so Jacob put his children and wives on camels, and he drove all his livestock ahead of him, along with all the goods he had accumulated in uh, Padan Aram, to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Oh my! What a what a 
what a what a what a what an account here. When Laban had had gone to shear his sheep, uh, Rachel stole her father's household gods. Rachel stole her father's household gods. Now this is a point that I want to get to because in this dispensation in which we live and in this church era, things have. Um, really uh, disintegrated or become so disoriented with people that they have uh, their own household gods. Yeah, their own teraphim. I mean, people, instead of being confidently connected and um, obviously um, uh, planted in a church, in a church setting, have decided that their church is their, is their home. In other words, is their household. And they have a family, uh, in-laws and uh, nieces, nephews, or whatever. They have a group of people. And um, so they feel like that takes the place of God's church, uh, God's sanctuary, a place that God has chosen. But see, that's not the case. Uh, that's why Laban lost everything. Because when the original, the real thing showed up, uh, because... Laban was uh, anti-God. He was actually an idol worshiper. Uh, he had to pay the penalty. And see, a lot of people are paying a penalty in this pandemic because they've chosen just to be frozen and just go the easy way of just sitting it out and hanging out with their family and their relative and have, have not toughed it out, prayed it through, and not have really sought God on what to do. Because they, they, they're idyllic. They have idols in their household. Moreover, I know it's a tough word, but, you know, God spoke to me about this, so I'm giving it out. Moreover, Jacob deceived Laban and, and uh, the Armenian by not telling him that he was running away. So he fled with all that he had and crossed the Euphrates River and headed for the hill country of Gilead. Um, so anyway, Laban's not happy with it. He chases uh, Jacob down. Um, and he looks through all of Jacob's stuff when he catches him. And, but before he got there, God speaks to Laban, the Armenian, in a dream. And he's on the chase now. It took him seven days to catch up with Jacob and his group and all, all of his wealth and family, etc., etc. But God came to Laban, the Armenian, in a dream at night and said to him, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. In other words, he said, back off. Don't touch the man of God. Um, and see, this is this is the confusing part because he, when people think, you know, and people uh, have for real heard from God, they can hear from God. And, and that's the trouble with a lot of these people out there. They're trying to do their own thing, trying to have their own family teraphims, trying to have their own family church and X themselves out of church, uh, disqualify themselves out of the real church that God has prescribed and ordained. Um, you see, a, a lot of people uh, are doing this. And, and it's not... Uh, pleasing to God. But you see, God was speaking to Laban. So God can speak to these people even in idolatry. They can hear from God. They have spiritual gifts. They have skills. But I'm telling you, prosperity is not flowing and fluid with them. In this case, you can see it. That all the prosperity moved to Jacob. He basically uh, extracted all the wealth of Laban. Because God was with him. More importantly, way back in Bethel, remember what he did? He set up pillars there when the ladder of God came down. The Lord was standing up over the ladder. Angels were ascending and descending on the ladder. What did he do? He went over and made a memorial, uh, uh, a pillar out of the rocks that he laid his head on. And then he vowed a vow to God, made a vow, used a financial instrument. And then uh, in that vow, he included the statement that he would give God a tenth of everything. See, tithers have first priority. 
people that handle their money right have first priority with God. And I don't care how spiritual you think you are and how, how wonderful you think your spiritual life is. Tithers, people that do business with God, people that do it God's way are always going to have precedent over people that are worshiping teraphims or having only their household gods and just doing anything in, in any way that they want to. And this is one big area why people are not prosper. I'm telling you the truth. My God, I feel the fire of God on that when I'm speaking. This is for somebody, and I know it is. And God led me to say this, and God led me to, he pieced this together for me. Uh, I, you know, God, God's in charge here. I give him all the credit. I mean, he's the one who, who laid this out for me to see it. Um, and so Laban's accusing Jacob, what have you done? In verse 26, uh, you've deceived me. You carried off my daughters like captives in war, which is all a bunch of baloney because you heard before his daughter said, whatever you want to do, do it. Jacob, we're all with you. You know, and he was lying uh, out the side of his mouth. You know, you deceived me. You didn't deceive him. In fact, he was deceived 10 times. And, and Laban changed his wages 10 times. And he had to work for Laban 20 years. You know, and, and uh, he deceived him with uh, Leah and Rachel. I mean, he's a major deceiver. And see, people that have their own uh, teraphims and their own uh, idol worship set up in their own families, and, and they have family priests and all that, uh, people that sp are sp supposedly somebody special with God and all that, and they're off to themselves, and they got their own little money, and they got their own little world, you know what I mean? So Laban had his own little world. He was feeling real important, feeling like he was really a major player. But when God shows up, you find out what you're, st what you're made out of. You're going to find out what your substance is about. You're going to find out whether you really are who you say you are when the real God shows up. Hallelujah. I feel this in the spirit. Oh, I feel it so powerfully. Hallelujah. But anyway, he went on and on and talked. But anyway, they made a, they made amends. And, um, and then um, basically uh, they made an altar between the two of them. They, they made an agreement. And... Uh, I mean, you know, uh, Laban was a piece of work. I mean, he, he was requiring all kinds of things out of Jacob. You know, in verse 38, I've been with you for 20 years now. Your sheep and goats have not miscarried, nor have I eaten rams from your flocks. He never took anything from them. I did not bring your, uh, you animals torn by wild beasts. I bore the loss myself. He Anything that Laban lost, he paid for you demanded payment for me for whatever was stolen by day or night. And, and even anything that was stolen, he blamed it on Jacob. And look what he says here in verse 40. This was my situation. The heat consumed me in the daytime and cold at night. The sheep fled from my eye. The, excuse me, the sleep. It sounds like sheep, doesn't it? The sleep fed, uh, fled from my eyes. The sleep fled from my eyes. They couldn't even sleep. He said, I was like this for 20 years. I was in your household. I worked 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flocks. And you changed my wages 10, 10 times. And then he says, if the God of my father and the God of Abraham and, and the fear of Isaac had not been with me. He recognized it himself. And I want to underscore this again. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham the, and the fear of Isaac had not been with me, you surely would have sent me away empty handed. But God has seen to my hardship. Oh, I feel this for somebody. But God has seen to my hardship and the toil of my hands. And last night he rebuked you in a dream. Woo, glory to God. I love it. So anyway, they made a truce and uh, they split from there. And if, if that wasn't enough, here comes Jacob, and he going, he runs right into Esau. The next step, the next meeting he's going to have is a meeting with Esau. He just he just had a meeting with Laban, and now he's got to meet Esau and on the way back to uh, Bethel, back to his uh, father's house, Isaac. But there it is. It's all in a nutshell. I wanted to put it out there and get, give you the comparison, show you uh, about the power of a vow power of a special experience with God and the power of tithing and, and, and the nip and tuck 
and uh, the terse and adverse and the uh, the indemnity of life and how it falls and how it tries to assail and prevail over a person. But when they're in covenant with God, when they're in league with God, when they are in partnership with God, how things change, oh, how they change. Even through the struggles, the difficulties, uh, a tither, a man, a woman of God, always come out on top. Well, that's it for now. God bless you for listening. It's Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center. If you want to sow a seed into this ministry, please do so by going to um, uh, DallasRevivalCenter.com. There's a PayPal link there. PayPal me. You can sow there. Um, also, uh, download the app Zell, Z-E-L-L-E, on your smartphone. Put in the number 469-335-3356. And you can send from the platform there. You can go to Facebook, get on the inbox um, uh, there, and uh, click on the um, uh, dollar sign. You can send money that way. Or you can go to and just send your check of money order to Dallas Revival Center, 271636, 271636, Dallas, Texas, 75227, uh, in care of United Assemblies Worldwide Outreach Ministries, or just abbreviate it, abbreviate it, U-A-W-O-M-I, U-A-W-O-M-I. I'm so thrilled to be able to present this. God bless you. It's my prayer and God's best. And I pray that prosperity will follow. And prosperity, um, why prosperity stop number three will be coming up soon. God bless and bye-bye for now. Appreciate you and love you all.